What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. I'm back. We're back. We had a week out of office last week. We were uh, on our very first cruise ever as a as a family on the Disney Wish. Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh it's it's kind of amazing to be back. I um <laughs> I have I have found I think with with vacations that there's this like this kind of um I, like I don't even know like bullwhip or slingshot or, or something effect that almost happens to me tell me if this happens to you where like I think a lot of times I like when I'm on vacation my mind is so in vacation mode that I don't even know if I fully appreciate like how much like fun or how much stress that I am actively under yeah until I <laughs> like get home from it and then mm-hmm. i have like a little bit of time to like reflect on how the past several days went like there's there, it, it, it's it's the um like a lot of people say like sometimes the most fun thing about a vacation is just being able to like anticipate it like look forward to it it's like the, like if you know you're going to the beach this month or or you know next month or something then you have like weeks on end where you're like oh man i can't wait like it's gonna be so much fun i'm gonna be able to go and like unplug right. and relax like and the the fun part of it is knowing you have this fun thing on the horizon but sometimes for me i think i will get through an experience and not know how much i enjoyed it until after it's over right. and then like upon reflection i'm like wow and for me on this particular trip i feel like i got home and i was like i am actually that despite how chaotic and wild and like you know the like i always imagined going on a cruise to just sort of be like the um epitome of the like sort of uh like touristy relaxing easygoing vacation and i was like there's a lot of moving parts with this you know where there's like there's there's flights there's bus rides there's you know like meetings and and all these yeah. different like bits and despite all that i feel like i got home and like when i when i was like man i actually do feel recharged that's I, awesome yeah i was like i i feel really good about it and like as i was looking back on the week i was you know i was scrolling through all my photos and i took a ton that's awesome of photos i was like you know this was a good moment this was a good moment oh my god i forgot about this one already but that was so much fun like it was really cool um so anyway it was it was uh like have have you had any amount of experience in any capacity whether it was like that was good bad good to be home sad to be home i think there was definitely so several things like i think i almost would i i one of the feelings i've had since we got home from the cruise is that i almost like i think you need to have like been on a cruise before to like um truly know how a cruise is like (laughs) that's fair yeah um, i agree with that like I feel like by the third or fourth day like everyone was like really like had it figured out and I was like you know I was good at navigating the app and I sort of like knew the schedule of the ship and like when dinner was and like okay this is where the kids can go or this is what I can expect to get done or here's here's all the places I can eat at any given time right right. and like okay here a a great way to like think about because there's a lot of time where it's like what are we going to do next like what are we what what now right and there's like you know they have you know the the cruise app is really good and it's like every 15 minutes there's like something else happening so you can just basically open that at any time and be like yeah i'm interested in that let's go do it or right, right, or right, yeah. this is at one so let's plan around that um but i don't feel like i got into a groove with that until like maybe the last like full day at sea which um so i, f- I feel like if we did it again like i'd be much more equipped um i think uh, so it's interesting you mentioned like looking back at all your photos and I'm like I was looking at my photos too because like oh I should post like now that we're back and we have Wi-Fi and service again I right. should maybe I'll post some some pictures and I was going through I was like I did not take a lot of pictures like, no way <laughs> I know like I was sort of like semi vlogging along the way but like I'm looking through it and I'm like man I, I wish I'd taken like a lot more pictures and like uh I'm almost, I was like kind of surprised at myself but then I think back and I'm like I know the reason I didn't is because almost like every moment is with the kids and it's like they are uh, they command so much attention all the time that it is it feels like it'd be so easy to take out your photo just take a picture people do it all the time at like any at their convenience and their leisure and it was like I, I it was like 
I think the having having the kids there. I mean, it was absolutely a, a blast. We had a lot of fun. There were many highs and I have lots of good memories, but they're also definitely like a bunch of like uh, definitely some lows as well. <laughs> yeah, it's it, there's no doubt about it that like, you know, we're we're like I, I mean, it'll it'll be interesting again, you know, like reflecting someday yes. on, on what these like vacations were like, because there's even a part of me like like in terms of being parents of young kids, especially going on something like a Disney cruise where it's like this is like one of those things where if it, like you start to realize how much a lifetime's worth of like marketing has infiltrated your brain and sort of like the way in which you you perceive what you are gifting your family in in this capacity that yeah. that is like it's like family kids we are going <clears throat> on a disney cruise it's like, like i have boom. spent i have spent my life <clears throat> being like like subliminally or or like in some capacity like guided towards this decision Ex as if yeah. like as if like what like this is the most fun thing that you could possibly ever give to your family right ever and then like when you get there and it dawns on you that they are not aware of this this lifetime's worth of messaging oh, yeah, they, they have no yeah like yeah luke and nick and nate they have no idea they're just like this is just, i guess what we're doing this week so great. right yeah so so we're here you know but like yeah so when you when you have like those those meltdown moments you're like you sort of like take like that like little bit of a step back and you're like wait a second no, I'm I'm here. I'm on a Disney cruise. I am I am like out at sea. I have like successfully yeah. <laughs> delivered I know. The, like you know the thing to deliver and and at the same rate and, and then but then you look at them and they're upset and they're sad or whatever and you're and you're like wait this isn't right this isn't what's supposed don't to, you appreciate uh, this <laughs> <laughs> come like, on oh man no, um, which is not to say that they don't but it's like it's so this is I think one of the absolute hardest parts about parenting is like assuming like is like assuming your kids have the same like emotional range and maturity as adults and that they should just be like like grown up already. Yeah, and it's just like they just don't and like uh, it's so understandable that there's like so much stimulation and like things are not in their control and they're out of their routine and like they're not like they're not used to it. They don't know what to expect and it's like it's easy to see why it would be overwhelming at times and like um, when you're like in the middle of doing something fun, it's like max out fun and then it's like when they're like unexpected and they don't know what's happening next. It can just feel like you know I can, I can easily see how you could be overwhelmed. Oh yeah and upset yeah. about stuff and you know when you you can't even like you don't you don't have your own space. It's hard to like go just like you know if it, on the, like at home or something if Luke is like really upset you know a lot of times it's just like just just go calm down go in your room play for like 10 minutes and it's amazing how he'll come back and just be like a different person and yeah. it's like that that space does not exist on the cruise ship you know <laughs> yeah no ev everything is is thrown for a loop and, and yeah. this is like one of those things where um like because you know Addison was going through like a lot of the same things where I don't even think like Alice or I fully realized how <laughs> regimented our life has become as like as parents. Yeah. Like we, we sort of like, like live and die by our schedule and like, yeah. like the times that Addie is like supposed to go down for, you know, each of the naps and like what our bedtime rituals look like and like, you know, what her diet typically consists of and, right. and all these types of things. But then when you're out there, and you've got like just mm, like stimulus, like turn up to like not even 10, but 11. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like there is everything everywhere all the time, all at once. And then there's like there's like sweets and candy and, you know, yeah, just like, sort of like yeah, just toys and shopping. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and so it's and, you know, you're sort of like on that, like, no, we're on vacation. Like, you know, this is the exceptional time. This is the time that you can like allow this. So, you know, exactly. You, you get back to the the room at the end of every night and the, you know, like there's the like the um like towel animals that have been yes. crafted on your bed. But in addition to that, there's also like, you know, a piece of candy for each member of your party, mm -hmm. which, you know, <clears throat> Addie figured out on night one. Yeah. It was sort of like as soon as we got back to the room, she was like candy time. And it, it was like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, absolutely not. Right. But also like, you know, now now we're here. Now yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, it, well, it's so funny. There are certain things that they did pick up on pretty quickly. And like, I'm glad you mentioned the towel animals. So this was a pretty fun thing. Like the first night we were there, our um, dinner was like the the Marvel themed dinner. Yes. Yes. Yep. 
So which was uh, pretty cool. And but like, you know, every like, you know, 10 minutes or so, like all the screens in the restaurant would turn on and you'd be, you know, brought up to speed on, you know, whatever was happening on the ship that the heroes were helping. And uh, in particular, it was uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp who were like talking to you. And they have, I mean, it was, I thought the production value was pretty good. I mean, they have all the actual actors. Yeah, you yeah, know? They, it's like, they, they definitely do. Yeah, yeah so, it was like, like, oh, man, they like, like Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly like came out here and filmed a whole thing that, and <laughs> yes for the for the cruise yeah, itself. for the cruise so all I could think in my mind that like the entire time that this was like playing out was I was trying to be like <clears throat> what was it like the day that like that these actors were given the call and they're like hey Disney cruises is doing like a Marvel thing and like they need like we need someone to come and be, right. and be like the host of this. It's like, like in my <coughs> mind, I'm trying to like imagine as these like, you know, a list actors and stuff like that. It's like, like it, it like where, where does their head go when asked to go and be like part yeah. of cruise ship entertainment? Like, if, is that something that right. it's like, heck yeah. Like I definitely want that gig. Like, right. Or is this just sort of like part of your contract? It's like, yeah, when you agreed to be Ant-Man, it's like you, it, whenever we need you for three, you know, theme yeah, rides, like con- you gotta come do it. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. your contract on page 63, sub paragraph seven, yeah, you there know. you are. It yeah. was, yeah, it's like, who, who are they going to get for this? And it was so interesting, like seeing like who they got for it. And then like, what are their goals? Even, in, like with this particular thing yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. like because uh, I felt like it was better produced than like you know when you're standing in line at like cosmic rewind and the guardians are there and you're like all right everyone's just sort of like yeah we're here for the standing in line day and uh, we're gonna this this mission is gonna play a million times and it's like a little bit cheesy yeah you sure, know? Sure, sure. Uh, but we're all in character and we're the real actors and stuff but this it felt a little bit higher production value than that okay. so they had but it's not you know but all, so they had like big but you know, it's like, oh, they didn't get like Captain America or like Iron Man or something. You know, it's like it's Ant Man and the Wasp. It's like, but it's still, it's still Paul Rudd. You know, it's like he's still on the same, you know, list as Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. Oh, know? sure, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. like yeah, he's a big deal. Like, yeah, he's still got a big guy there. They had Captain Marvel. You know, it was like uh, they had Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, and then um, God, who uh, the the new Captain? I said they didn't have Captain America. They did. They do. Yeah, yeah, Sam. just the yeah. Sam Wilson version, yeah. not the Chris yeah. Evans version. Um, so, uh, I, I thought that was interesting. It's like, are they, uh, and then it's like, okay, so are they trying to like get you more introduced? Like they want to give you more screen time with like these new characters that are sort of the new faces of the MCU right right, right, right now. Right. Like that's, that's also part of their goal, I think in there. But anyway, the, the whole point of it is that in, in the videos, um, Ant-Man, Scott is like, uh, you know, futz it around with all the, the pin particles and he blows up this giant, uh, towel swan that he's folded. Yes. And so when we got back to the room that night, that sure enough, there's a towel swan sitting on the bed and all my kids are like, oh my God, Ant-Man was here. Yes. <laughs> and it was like so funny. So then like every night when we come back to the room, they'd be so excited to see what like Ant-Man did or like what animal he folded on the room. And we were just like, that was always, that was so funny. It was like, it was like Santa was coming, but it was Ant-Man. But it was Ant-Man. <laughs> yeah. I know. That, yeah. No, that was, it was really, really adorable in the way that it played out. And I was like, I wonder whether or not this is like a common occurrence for people who have like witnessed that, like wh- like whether or not the kids are like, oh, Ant Man's the one who's doing it, or if this was like like just something very specific that they were like, oh, okay, Ant Man yeah. makes the towel creatures, and and now we have a towel creature. Yeah, it was Ant Man, yeah, yeah, which was super fun. Yep. Um, yeah. So we and then the other cool things they always put like like they like the sunglasses from like the yes. like somewhere in your room they'll like take the sunglasses and put them on like the little creature and like so that was really adorable. So yep. that was always Addy's favorite was the figure out like how they were going to end up using right the, the sunglasses I, I would say Addy's favorite second to the fact that it meant that there was going to be candy candy in yes. the room. Yeah. yeah yeah so the the last day so like again like getting used to it um, like every night at dinner there's basically they hand you a menu and they're like okay here's your appetizer option your entree your dessert if you want super salad whatever and so you just sort of go through and pick one of each and on the kids it's sort of the same way but the dessert was sort of the same for the kids every day yeah and one of the options was like a Mickey ice cream bar and that's what Nate kept choosing every day yep. but so on the final day you do like a farewell breakfast thing yeah and at that point you could tell Nate was like dialed in it's like okay when we go to the restaurant I pick a food and then I get an ice cream bar so we're just there for like breakfast and he's like I want sausages then an ice cream bar and it was like oh that's so funny you figured it out also no not getting an ice cream yeah, bar for we're breakfast yeah, <laughs> not when we're about to be traveling all day yeah <laughs> yeah but, yeah, but it, I mean I, I mean I, I'm sure if we asked them they would have brought it the the 
the the crew on the ship was very good at accommodating basically any request. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it, it's definitely one of those things where like as as much as like all the obvious like Disneyification of everything, it like makes it super special and fun. The the crew, like the people that like work the ship, are just amazing. Yeah, like, they were really they're good. So great. So yeah, huge huge shout out to them. But the other the other big thing um, that like I th- I started to get to like really experience what I felt like possibly in like full force for the first time was how much fun it is to watch your kid experience fun. Yes. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's like, forever like you know we've we've been going to the parks now quite a bit like i mean almost like annually for the past like seven years yeah or so. So like yeah it's crazy to think about but yeah we've definitely got like some some reps <laughs> in and stuff and and like there's so many aspects of going to the parks that um you know like historically you never really paid a huge amount of like notice to because maybe they weren't the things that you as as a full-grown adult were looking to get from your your park going experience right um, but now all of a sudden, like everything about like the, like the character meet and greets, it's like, I don't know, like, it, to, like to watch Addie be so excited to like get in line to meet Donald duck. Yeah. You know, it's like, like typically I would have probably been like, Oh cool. Look, there's Donald, you know, like I would have like, you know, sort of like waved <laughs> out of like, you right. know, like whatever. And like kept going. Right. Like but, you, 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 an adult is not like, oh, it's like, it's cool to see, Oh, there's Donald over there, but you're not like getting in line to go meet him. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and so like we, we went and we met, we met Donald and then we met Daisy and like Daisy, like kissed Addie's hand, oh, my you goodness. know, yeah. which was like the cutest little thing ever. But then, then Addie saw that like goofy was out in line and she was like, Oh my gosh, well, I really want to go and oh meet. my gosh like i want i want goofy to kiss my hand and so like you know we go and we like we we're like waiting in line and like you know this was like one of those things like where we like you know we're telling addy like on day one like oh, we have to like wait our turn she's like wait turn wait turn so she got really good about like you know when we go and get in line right. you know she'll like look up at us and she'll be super patient like wait turn wait turn and you know then like we get up you know we're front front row in line or whatever and, like goofy comes up and she like literally like puts her hand out for for goofy to like oh to kiss, to it? kiss her so hand cute. And so, of course, Goofy has no idea why she's right. like why she's doing this. But then Alice is, you know, she's like Daisy kissed her hand, and then so like then Goofy was like right yeah, on like, right on cue and yeah. like did it right away. But so like upon coming home, it's like when you ask Addie about the cruise, and of course her vocabulary right now is still fairly limited. Right, you know, she doesn't have like that much she can like you know sort of chime in and like like give you thoughts about. Yeah, but like the thing she kept telling everybody was Goofy kissed my hand, oh. and it was just sort of like I can't believe that this is like the thing that like fully registered inside of her mind but it made it made the aspects of doing these types of things so much more fun so like all of my favorite moments of the cruise were quite literally all of the moments where i was just getting to watch addy like enjoy herself like that was like the the fun for me yeah absolutely i mean i think there is that like line you cross and i think uh like where the the vacations start to be like more about your kids and like what what you can do for them and less about like how you're going to enjoy it personally. Like I remember yeah last year when we went to the beach I kind of like um, like we've been to the beach a few times since having kids and my expectations going into the beach have been the same my whole life. Like it's going to be the it's going to be super fun nonstop fun. I will have zero worries. I'm going to sit on the beach and get in the water and do whatever I want. Right. And it was like it was very different once you have kids where it's like oh well you're going to be interrupted almost every five minutes and uh, need to go work on something and yeah, someone's going to get sand in their someone's eyes. Someone's going to sand in their eyes. Yeah. Or they're going to want you to dig a hole. They're going to want you to come in the water with you or they're going to want you to you know uh, do, do whatever. Um, yeah, you know, change diapers, what, what, whatever it's going to be. And I remember just like going into the beach trip last year, just as if like all I care about is playing with the kids. Like that was my only concern. And as a result, it was just like such a such a fun trip. Yes. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. yeah. I remember coming out of that. Yeah. Yeah. That was so that that was super fun. And I think um, you're right. It's like watching the kids have fun is absolutely the highlight on uh, I think for the cruise ship and like Disney World and stuff like when we're there with them. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yep. So uh, kind of just a, a whole new frontier. But then the other really cool thing about this particular trip was like the sheer amount of time that Addy got to have with you guys. Oh, my gosh. Well, that was also just just a big highlight for me because like um, yeah, we got to spend like five days in a row, like seeing Addie, which is fantastic, which you know. she loved. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I cannot stress this enough. So honestly, like we went on a cruise ship. We met all the characters. We did all the fun. <clears throat> the real absolute highlight for Addie 
was hanging out with Jay. No, like she <laughs> loved it so much to the point where like we could literally like, you know, she would like wake up in the mornings and um, this is actually another like one of those funny like little asides is just that like I you've always historically like woken up like fairly early and I yeah. feel like your kids also wake up kind of early mm-hmm. um, on the flip side of things. I was always like the kid in the family that like slept in. Yeah. And it was sort of like, you know, like Christmas morning and you guys would have to like come and like nudge me to like, like, get like come on, man, we gotta go sit at the top of the stairs. Um, so I was a big sleeper in her um, and Addie, as it turns out, also was a big sleeper in her, nice. which is not the worst thing in the world. Um, but it meant that like oftentimes we were in a hurry to go and do things. And so like, you know, you're trying to like wake her up from either a nap or in the morning. Right. And it was like, there was nothing doing it. Like, we're going to go see Jay. And she'd be like, all right, I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. We're going to see Jay. We're going to, when are we going to see Jay? When are we, are we going to see Jay now? Yes. <laughs> and so every time we saw Jay, she would like immediately go and like, like grab his hand. And like, I have so many pictures of like, like Addie, just like, like holding your hand as you like walk through a hallway or walk through the parks or walked along the cruise. It was just, it was so amazing. So. Yeah. That, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a pretty magical feeling on the receiving end too. We're just, just like, cause like I love her so much, but like, I don't get to see her every day. So, or anything like that. And then she would just kind of wants me to just grab him. Like, oh, me? Like, <laughs> I know, yeah, it's like I'm the chosen, <laughs> I'm one. The chosen one today. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So yeah, I loved like being able to walk around the park, just like holding her hand and stuff. That was so, and she's so fun to like play with. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 So that was, that was, it's it, just really, really cool and fun and special just to like it, to see those like little, little moments happen. And, and so I think that was, for, that was the other big thing for me. It's like normally I think when I, when I'm on these trips and, and this was what was kind of interesting about all the photos I took is that like you go through and a lot of times there's like, like, okay, we're at the castle. So it's like, let's everybody go and stand in front of the castle and we'll take like the perfect photo in front of the castle, like where everybody's like smiling at the camera and like, you know, boom. Right. Um, and, but then like, like what I ended up really loving was that there were like these like little moments where it was like, you know, we got Addy this like special chair that she could use like, um, in on like the planes and stuff like that and the buses. Yeah. And so like, you know, we took pictures of those and I was like, you know, at some point in time, I'm going to look back on this and be like, Oh, I forgot about that chair. Um, you know, like that, like yeah. at some point in time, we needed this extra accessory to like make travel easier or whatever. Right. Or there's like the, the pictures that are sort of just like, you know, you and uh, it's like at the airport. It's like, but like, you know, you're way off the distance. It's, it's not like a super in focus photo or anything, but like, you know, it's, it's like one of the ones where Addie's like holding your hand or, or, um, there was like one night where we went to like one of the shows and Luke really enjoyed sitting next to like Addy at the shows. Yeah. So there's like a picture of them like sitting side by side, like with their legs can't even like extend over the, yeah, cushions, over the chair, <laughs> you know, and they've got like popcorn and you know, like, you know, like Luke sort of like leaned in like towards Addy and it's like, you know, they're, they're not like the greatest composition photos, but they tell a story and they yeah. like mark a moment. Um, and I was like, Oh, like, I could, I could like I as soon as I got home and I was like scrolling back through these photos I was like oh my gosh like these are such crystallized moments now like this is so I'm so glad that we like we we captured it in time because eventually they will be so much older yeah and their personalities could be so much different but like but right now like I can always right go back here. and be like remember when we were you know we saw Aladdin you know yeah. like <laughs> that was so fun <laughs> that was you know, well, the Aladdin show was good it was really good. yeah that was, was really, really fun good. one yeah um, okay so I feel like if we're gonna uh, the we can't we can't talk about the cruise without talking about the uh, the sort of pin mania oh, yes yes happened on the trip dude you, yeah. you you get to take full credit yeah. for, for, for this <laughs> this whole concept but the the <laughs> contagion yes. that is the the mm-hmm. pin obsession um you talked i think i think in it was the episode that came out last week about like the the pluto sort of like snowball concept yeah like should we like, be aware of like the pluto bleed or yeah, whatever exactly yeah and, and i would say and and i'd be curious to hear what your thoughts were in terms of like how you felt like this trip went because because like I, I would say that it wasn't just the Pluto aspect of it, but like you got everyone, every member of the family, like dialed into this pin. Well, by trading. no by no intent either. You know, I was just sort of, you know, it's just like uh, you know, loving what you do and it's contagious, I guess. I, I think that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it wasn't very, like it's everyone not, should pick a character or anything like right. that. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it wasn't an assignment. Yeah. I think it was just it, you're exactly right. It's just contagious enthusiasm is apparent. Like yeah. people can tell the difference. So. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it was, yeah, it was super fun. I was so hyped to go in and do some, like, uh, some pin trading around the parks and on the cruise. And I really didn't know what to expect. Like I knew there'd be shops and stuff on the boat, but I didn't think there'd be like a ton. And then there's like, um, I know for any given cruise that's going out, there's like, I guess, Facebook groups that form. Yeah. And there'll be like all the people that are going to be on that cruise will start, you know, um, coordinating different things or meeting people. There was this big trend of like people, like if you walk down the halls, people would have these like three pocket 
like door hanger things. Yes. And what they would have done was like almost arrange like a secret Santa with another family. So then when they got on the ship, like I guess you go leave all the gifts for their kids and stuff on their like little door hanger and they come and leave them for you. And it's just like people I mean, people were so into it and it was like everywhere. It was. Yeah, yeah. The, the the decorating and, and I, I feel like I've learned maybe that this is more of like a cruise thing, but like the decorating of your cruise door because they're yeah. all metal. You can like you can magnetize yes. all sorts sorts <clears throat> of stuff to it and like people have gotten very clever in terms yeah. of like, you know, how they how they do it and how they interact. And, yeah, and I love what you guys did, but I'll let you yeah. tell it. Okay, well, this is a fun thing I learned. So in during our, our pin training I actually learned I saw on someone's door that they had been awarded like best decorated door on the ship oh. and I was like oh it is so game on if and ever we are back on a cruise where like, yeah, I didn't know this was I didn't know we were playing a game here but uh, but but now that I know out, it's on <laughs> it is the on they had they had covered their door in like perler bead characters they'd all made themselves and stuff so that was I mean theirs was pretty impressive obviously a lot of effort went into it but anyway anyway we'll see you next time but so the other thing people organize is if they're like pin traders and they'll like hang up a board or something on their door and just put up a bunch of tradable pins on it and it's just like it is at the parks where it's just like you know take one leave one exactly yeah there's like a big you know group where it's just like leave your door number whatever it is here so everyone knows what doors to go to on the ship right and I mean you could I didn't never look at whatever those were you can also just like walk around an entire ship floor and just sort of find them yeah on yep. your own and oh man it was so much fun it was like yeah. going and doing that. I mean, I think that might have been the highlight for my kids was just doing the pin trading like which isn't even something offered like by the cruise itself. It's just sort of part of being on the boat. But you know, we um, our strategy going in was that we bought this like um, bulk trading pin set off like um, eBay or something. You can just you know get like I don't know how many we had like 25 tradables or something 25 okay. or 50 or something like that and they're all just sort of like bulk there's like really no intent to keep any of them. They're just for the sake of like putting on the board so you can get something you do want. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you yeah. can just like buy them a lot cheaper because that's sort of the other problem is that like w- when you get down there, if you don't have any starter pins, it's hard to hard to get hard to get them. So much yeah, cheaper way to get into it. It, it does become yeah, like one of those big things because like I think every pin at minimum is is maybe like ten dollars a piece or something. So yeah. like if you see somebody with like a highly decorated lanyard, it's like it's it's like one of those things where it's like, well, that's a flex. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's like, a it's little like, bit. It's like, you know, like that person's wearing like some some. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, they got they got some. Yeah, they they've spent some money on it. Some pretty pretty adorned. Yeah. But the other thing about having like the bulk pins too is that like you know you guys in particular of course collect like the like the Pluto pins, right? And so it's like this could be the type of thing where somebody else could have a Pluto pin that like that has no specific meaning to them. Yeah, but then it might have some meaning to you guys exactly as well. So it's like you know it's it's like okay I got this the, these don't mean anything to me, but they might mean something to someone who collects. Maleficent pins right or and it's yeah. you know and it, yeah we, we met a bunch of different people walking around the boat that were also doing the trading like while we were doing it and you know some people they'd be very broad just like I just collect you know Star Wars um, and uh, Iron Man and you know Darth Vader or whatever they'd have like just anything in this general category sure is good enough for them and some people just be like I, you know huh, I have ones if I if I find one that's better than one I have I just it's just you know that's it right it's, right. it's just cooler or it's just it's just the act of walking around so we have yeah we are like very focused um, on what we're going in at. So uh, before we got on the boat, we just we were at Disney World for a day. We went to like Magic Kingdom. Yeah, and this was like my starting point. So there was like a gift shop at the at the resort we were at and they had like a, one, one of my my go to strategies is a, a lot of times they put Pluto in like the um, there'll be like a starter pin set where you can buy like four at a time and a lanyard. Okay. And a lot of times Pluto will be one of those guys. So it's like, okay, I want this because I get the Pluto, but then there's three others which I can just sort of trade because who cares? Yeah, I don't okay. want this Chippendale pin. <laughs> what, 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 what am I supposed to do with that? I know. God, come on now. That one's easy to get rid of. And then when you just walk around, you can sort of shift them around. So I went in and I remember like going through like the first day at Disney World. I was like, I have no idea how many to expect. Like by the time we get to the end of this trip, like, will I have like completely covered my lanyard and like new exciting Pluto pins right. or will it just be like, yeah, I got like three, you know, I don't know. Right. Um, and I remember like we walked around the parks and I think I found like uh, like Beth found a different one she could purchase. And I think we found like one we could trade for at Magic Kingdom. I was like, oh, it's sort of slim pickings. And then um, there was there was one night where um, we did Disney Springs during the day and I had found this like really cool Baymax shirt that I wanted. Yes, but they just did not have it in my side that checked in the back. They're like, well, but you can also check at the the big store in Epcot or at Magic Kingdom because they should have them too. And I was like, okay, we're not going back to those places, but 
Good to know. Maybe yeah. it's online or something, but then it turns out later that night um, we did have a park hopper pass. We just weren't planning on going because we didn't want to lug the kids all there, but it was sort of like, you know, seven o'clock. The kids were in bed and I was like, we, there was like talk of maybe going to Epcot and Beth's like, you should just go if you, you should just go look for the shirt because like what else are we going to do? Just sit here and I was like, all right game. Oh, maybe I will go. I'll go by myself to Epcot. Let's go. You know, Dude, you did. Why not? You did it. <laughs> I did. So I was like, all right. Um, and you know, you're looking at like the time. It's like seven o'clock. Actually still tons of fun to be had at Disney World. Yeah. So how about that. Yeah. I went to I was, and it was very weird being in the park like completely by yourself. It's like, well, what do I do? Because it's like I didn't want to pay for like lightning lens. I wasn't doing like rides or anything, but I didn't also want to just go walk through the shop and be like, all right, done. See ya. You know, I know which I think is like what I would have done. Like I, yeah. I definitely it occurs to me that like I don't have um, like like I could go and be in t- inside of like a completely fun environment, but like without like my my plan pre built. Yeah, I feel like I just sort of be like, huh. Well, I checked. Now yeah. people are probably watching me. Yeah, they all real, know. Like, yeah, they're they're probably like they're like, man, that guy has no idea what he's doing by himself right now. He yeah. is clearly like just <laughs> clueless as to what to go. So he'll probably just leave. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. See ya. Get <laughs> See out of here. Friend. Yeah. Yeah. So my plan was, uh, yeah, to go look for the look for the shirt, which I did not find at oh, Epcot. Too bad. Unfortunate. But I also know I was like, you know what? There's a really cool pin trading shop at uh, Epcot as well. So I'll go check that out as well. Though at least you know maybe I found something new there. Yeah. Which I didn't. I don't think I did there. But after I went through the store and didn't find anything, I was like, well, I haven't had dinner and Epcot famous for having good food. So it's like, I'm just going to sort of walk around the world showcase. And a lot of times, like um, we'll stop in like Mexico and Norway. And then a lot of the, the ones in the back, I feel like I just sort of skim through a lot of times. Like there's less like to do there. It seems like sure. But since I was by myself and had no particular plan at all, I just sort of went through like every single shop. Amazing. <laughs> like just sort of like walked in like, what's in here? Oh, it's perfume. Oh, this one's cologne. Oh, this one. Oh, you know, just like what? What have they put in every single one? Right. And then like almost every shop in every kingdom has a different pin board. And I was like, oh, man. Well, you know what? Now I can just at least look for pins as I walk around and sample different foods around the world here. So it was, it was pretty fun just sort of being like waiting to see if there was like a food that sparked your fancy and then checking all the boards and whatever. Um, um, did not find a single Pluto pin at Epcot, though. Unbelievable. On the entire World Showcase. I was like, that is, what are the freaking odds? Like, I looked at so many, and then I was, like, feeling discouraged. Like, oh, maybe it's just, like, maybe it's just run dry, you know? And you start to see, like, all, like, certain kinds of pins, like, on a lot of boards. Like, clearly, these are, like, the loser pins. Like, <laughs> no, there's these little black rectangle ones that are, like, clearly everyone hates them. Like, they can't give them away. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. like what, where or when did did these, in, in, like, pins come from in particular? Yeah. That, like, that so many people purchase them that they're, like, in circulation yeah. for trading, but apparently nobody wants no them. No one wants them. It, it is. It, I've noticed that as well, where it's, like, yeah. it, it does seem like there's, like, 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 premium ones that you can find, like, like, one or two on every board, and there's, like, like a handful it's like right i've seen most of mm-hmm. these before these are, yeah. i have to say i think i think maybe the least popular pin in all of disney is this square one of ursula's chin from the little mermaid okay like there was clearly some set once upon a time that was like villains chins i don't know why because uh-huh. um, yes. there i see there's I, a, I, okay i've seen the scar one I've yeah, seen the jafar. Scar one. Yeah. yeah the jafar yeah. one yeah but like <laughs> very um, very like like defined chins. I, I know, yeah. Like I guess I don't know, but uh, Ursula, I guess people are just like repulsed by her chin. And oh, okay. I mean, yeah. it was it was on so many boards. Like I can't believe it's here again. Like you know, I should I should like keep tally. Or like I feel like how could I game if I was like get like ten points if I find the Ursula pin? Right, right, so, right. So yeah, yeah, be on the lookout. You if if you trade pins, I'm sure you know the one I'm talking about because it's on all of them. That's hilarious. Yeah. So there's that. But then as I'm leaving Epcot, like def- not defeated, I obviously had just a wonderful time just walking around and checking out the shops, even even if I didn't come up with any new pins or the Baymax shirt. Um, it occurred to me that like, you know what? Uh, Magic Kingdom doesn't close close until 11. And the lady at Disney Springs said that I could check the shop there and I've got a park hopper. So I not like anything else to do. You're going to hop on the monorail. <laughs> I just hopped on the monorail, went over to Magic Kingdom. And then I always have this like freak out. Mo- Every time I'm entering the parks, there's this freak out moment where I'm like, I'm going to scan my magic band and it's going to be like, you're not allowed in this park. You're, you've misinterpreted the information. It doesn't work. I have Go stay in guest relations. You'll never be allowed in. I'm always like, I always feel like I'm about to have done something wrong. Walked right in. No problem. 
Amazing. Yep. They also do not have the shirt there. Total bummer. Wow. Must be a super popular shirt. I, well, I think they only sell it at Disney Springs because I looked it up later and it was like new new thing arrives at World of Disney Disney Springs. And I was like, well, someone lied to me because it's clearly not at these other places yeah, either. That Lame. Yeah. So not a not a problem. But uh, then as I'm like walking out, I'm like, okay, well, the shirt hunt is done. I'm like what? What can I do here now? Because like certainly all of the rides are going to have like long lines. Like it couldn't even like lightning lane something. You know, I don't want to go wait in like an hour for Tron or something right now. Like that's sure. not worth my time, but I pull it up anyway just to see like are any rides short. Like could I could I go do something and the very top one been at a five minute wait, which basically means no line is Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin. And I was like, oh, pay dirt. Let's go. Like I'm just going to go do this until I get Galactic Hero. <laughs> Amazing, which is of course the perfect score. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't um, know how the ride works, you sit in this little buggy and you've got this little laser blaster and there's these little targets as you go through the ride and you just shoot them and try and get a high score. But um, we have been we, we we know like the cheat code as it were. We know the targets that are worth the most. We do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when we got to do some work with with Disney once upon a time, we sort of like cracked the code. Yeah, we cracked the code. Um, um, we, we put the myth to the test. Are these the ones that will get you the the perfect score if you can hit them? And the answer is absolutely true. Yes, they will. Um, but even even when you know where they are, you still have to hit them. Yeah, and it's not always super easy because the the targets are far away or they're moving or you know you you don't have a good line on it or whatever. But I, it only took me two tries and I got Galactic Hero and I was like so pumped about it. <laughs> like, I bet I bet that's amazing. Did you get your yeah. sticker? Oh, I got my sticker. Absolutely got my sticker. I was like I I, I ended up getting it like two rooms early, so I just sat there. I was like I can't even shoot anything now. Nothing to do. Uh -huh. Just enjoy uh -huh. the ride. Let me just let me, let me just take just, some selfies. Yeah, just yeah. like a big yawn for the uh, mm -hmm. for the for the ride cam. That's right. There you go. Done. Easy. So that was pretty exciting. I was like, man, I that that I remember that was like a really fun moment because I remember as a kid that being just like hands down my favorite ride at Disney World. And like there was a situation where I think it rained one day and like a lot of people left and then it like re or maybe it was like broken down for a minute, but we came back to it and there was no line and we did it like three or four times with like yeah. the whole family it and amazing. it was so fun. I was like, well, that's never going to happen again, but to date or that day it did. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, all I need is time. You know, it's hard to convince everyone to do the stride over and over, but it's just me. So let's go. Uh, and then I was feeling so proud of myself and I was like, okay, I missed on the pins. I missed on the shirt. I've been to two parks. I've walked. I don't even know how many miles tonight, like, yeah. but uh, I'm going to what I'm, I'm not coming home empty handed. So um, on Main Street at Disney World, there is this one sweet shop where like this is like a little known secret. I feel like where if you go to the very, very back, there's this like popcorn bar, right? Where, I still haven't done it. Yeah, where you can go and they'll like you, you like ch choose like a kind of popcorn and then you build this. I don't know. Um, you can put like M&Ms or Oreos or chocolate syrup or whatever. You build this like amazing bowl of popcorn. Yes. And uh, like our little brother Tyler told us about it and um, they've done it. And the last two times we've been there, like I've wanted to do it and we haven't made it back there. But um, and me and Beth had done it the other day. And I was like, you know, and the kids destroyed it. They loved it. That's awesome. And so I was like, you know what? I'm getting another getting another bucket of popcorn. I'm going to go do it. That's going to be a nice little surprise for everyone. When I get back, look at this. Another set of popcorn. Booyah. Um, but this was also one of my favorite moments was I walk in there and the girl who had taken my order the first time when me and Beth went was working again. And like this is a full day later. She goes, I think I remember your order. And I was like, there's no way. Like how many people have you made popcorn for since and then? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the last like day, like certain like that. I mean, sure enough, she's just like check dark chocolate Oreo M&M pretzels. I was like, oh my gosh, you just like completely remembered it. Incredible. I know the, that was that was so cool. And then the lady behind me was like, that sounds so good. He sounds like he knows what he's doing. I want that one. And I was like, yeah, I was like, well, I don't want you know, we do. We do have a I do do a podcast. With my brother's called popcorn culture. So we're like all about the popcorn and she's like, oh, really? That's so cool. Yeah, so I'm like, you know, I'm like I'm in the zone and like my popcorn ness here and this lady's so impressed with my order. <laughs> I'm like, OK, <laughs> you, can, you can call yeah, it the, the just, I'll, I'll take the Jonathan. Carlin, I'll take, I'll take the Jonathan yeah, Carlin. Yeah. But then I turned around and the girl I was like, I thought that was you. So I think that's why she remembered it because she like seen us on YouTube uh, before and uh, then her friend pops up. She's like, oh, she knew it was you. She came in the back after you gave me here yesterday. She's like, you won't believe it was just here. Oh my gosh, that is I so know. funny. So now I'm just like blushing. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I oh, know, no. right? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm like, I'm fully expecting them to put the Super Carlin Brothers mix on the popcorn board any oh, day now. Yeah, you know. we love that. We love that. Absolutely, the, be incredible. If you want to know what it is, uh, if you're if you're ever there and you want to try our our particular blend, Pro- it, propri- proprietary proprietary blend. blend yeah. yeah, you want the cheddar popcorn, the dark chocolate syrup, the peanut butter M and M's, pretzels, and the Oreo crumbles. Wow. There you go. There you're you go. welcome. Dang. Yeah. Dang. Dang. You're gonna love it. Yeah. Now people are gonna have to let us know if they go and try. Yeah. It, if you get it, it does sound. Please let incredible. us know because yeah, it was super good. But here's the other thing. Ben. Okay. What's the other I brought thing? it back to the room, and of course everyone's already asleep. And the next morning we're leaving for the cruise, so. Like there's no there's not like a good time to eat. It's not like wake up and be like, here, you guys want some like popcorn candy or whatever. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yes, we've, we've already discussed that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that yeah. fall. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, not a good time for sure. We're like, you know, we'll just bring it on the cruise. At some point, I'm sure it'll be like, guess what? We have a special treat. Um, but that moment never came. Yeah. So we're we go to like pack up and I'm like, I can't believe how long I've been lugging around this like, bucket of popcorn and haven't opened it at all. <laughs> like I'm like, I want I want the kids to be able to enjoy it. Right. And we're like packing up on the final day. And um, the way it works is you get like the, the the crew on the cruise will come take all of your bags and put them in this like big warehouse so that when everyone's exiting the cruise, they're not like lugging all their. Yeah. yeah, you're not. Everyone's carrying like 10 bags or whatever. So it was a pretty good system, but we left like a morning of bag just for all like the little random stuff, which the popcorn was included in. OK, right. So the popcorn's in that bag and we knew going in that we had eight tagged bags that the crew took and then we had our our loan final bag. Okay. And we we go, we get on the bus, we go to the airport, we get off the bus, they take all the luggage off the bus, the sitting on the ground, and we just count up. We're like eight tags, got it. And we go inside the airport and go to the bathroom real quick because it was a long bus ride. And then we come out and we're like, where's the pink bag? Turns out and we're like, oh, we must have left it out there because we only counted eight and didn't account for the we, we kept thinking like eight tags. Right, right, but right. And then like it was actually nine. Uh, and we turn around, we go back outside, and in the time it took us to go to the bathroom, the bus is gone and the bag is gone. And we're like, oh no. The worst. This is the worst. The lost luggage. The lost luggage. And mm. man, if you've ever lost luggage at the airport, just I feel so bad for you because it's such a kerfuffle. And we lost it at like just the worst point in the trip because like right at the moment where you're unsure whose responsibility that bag is now like did the cruise take it back did yes the you guys, airport take it back like <laughs> right because yeah it's it, you've literally dealing with potentially three different entities all together right one of them is disney cruise line which is like quite literally you know like if, if you're unfamiliar even with how they work they do four night and three night itineraries because literally the day that it returns to port it refills back up and goes back, right back out, out. And, and that's how your three and four day like yeah. lineups work out to give yeah. you like seven days of the week so it's just always going always going so it's like okay so then it's like it's exited the cruise line but then you're in like this in between stage like where we've we've like you know paid for our our bus transport which is then like it's like a second entity and then you get to like you know mco like or- orlando international and it's its own entity and so it's like which of these groups Things. is responsible right. for where it currently is. And you, because don't, and you don't know. It's like it was left on the sidewalk. Did like they just put it back on the bus? Does that mean it's with the buses? When the bus went back to the ship, did they unload it again? And they're like, hey, this was clearly on the cruise. Please find the passenger. Right. Or or did they just like they were like, no, once it's off the bus, that's it. It's on the sidewalk. Now someone at the airport took it because they're like unattended bag. Right. Yeah. 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 So yes, you yeah. just don't know. Right. And we're like, Fortunately, we had like five hours until our flight, which seemed like it was going to be a bad thing because it was like, how are we going to entertain the kids for five hours? But it gave us time to fill out all of the lost and found forms. Yes. And then, uh, but sad. So this bag, uh, of course, was holding the popcorn. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Which I, the, yeah, it was, it was really funny. I feel like the layers at which everybody was like the relationship with this bag in particular, because yeah. it seemed like it held so many different. Yes. Like, uh, th- like, like, valuable things for different reasons so like it had like one of the super carlin brothers like ipads in it yes so like one of the ipads that we use for like the j versus ben yeah. like our show notes like while we're recording the pop here and stuff like that like you know so normally it just lives at the office it never leaves the office save for these handful of trips where right. it's like a useful device to have yeah for the kids for, to like watch movies or whatever exactly yeah so it's sort of like okay there's like the like 
like reason number one, this is like a fairly expensive item that is now inside of the bag that is now missing. And we will also not have it for like when work arises. And yeah. then it's sort of like, then there's like the conversation where it's like, oh man. And then like the popcorn that I got on main street was yeah. in there. And I was so <gasps> excited to have the popcorn Yes, like, and that's missing. And then I think the one that got like literally everybody. And I feel like this was the one that signified how important the pins had gotten to yes. the trip was it was like our lanyards were in there yeah. and every single person I think was sort of like, screw the iPad. I know. Screw the value of it. Like the clothes, like this, yeah, that, the other, right. like it was like not the pins. I know it was like audible gasp. Like, no, you lost the pins. I know because it's like, it, it's like its own like bizarro, like, 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 uh, like, labor of love that has now gone into, you know, like trips upon trips and like, you know, collecting and like, even just like, like we said earlier, like the investment of the pins themselves. I know. Right. Like, 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 you know, like, like I said, those were some of like our favorite, like my favorite memories on the boat were like Luke sprinting from door to door and finding a new pin he wanted. And like, even watching him having to like rationalize out, like which one on his lane or did he want to trade? And it was like, just sort of like watching him sort of like understand the transaction a little. Yes. 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 Like I'm going to have to give up something I currently have in order to have something I now want. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like that was good. And like, I mean, Luke, especially he was just all in on it. He, I mean, he loved, he left with probably like, I don't know, like 25 pins or something. Yeah. Like, he, you know, it, cause he come across one. He would just love it. And we have like, you know, so many little tradables is like, all right, you can just have one of mine to trade. And you know, that worked out great for him because he netted one and didn't have to give up anything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. But that's fine. Cause that's what we bought them for. So don't care. Right. right, um, right. That, that, that is the point. <laughs> that, that is the point. Yeah. Like, don't worry about that. But then I was going to feel so bad because I mean, he was so so excited about him. He was talking about him the whole time. It's like, now your lanyard's gone. I'm like, I do not want to be the one to tell you that we <laughs> lost all of them. Yes. And then like, I'm also just like privately devastated that all my new Pluto pins are gone because even though I struck out at Epcot and Magic Kingdom, the tr- pin trading on the boat was epic. Yeah. Like you could walk around and you found so many boards. So many people were doing it and like you could walk around and then you could just do it again the next day and so many people were doing it that they were just like all fresh again. All fresh. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, that was the other thing that was wild too because I had to walk past your room in order to get to my room every day. Yeah. And the number of times that I would be like coming down the hallway and just saw people interacting with the pin board hanging on your door. Yeah. It was sort of like, like I would like, I'd like turn the corner and I would like see the people standing there and I would like, I would like grab like Allie's hand. I'm like, oh, Allie, it's happening. Yeah. Look, <laughs> look, look, the thing. it's real. You know, yeah. It's like, cause you know, for the most part, you don't actually ever see this exchange at work. Yeah, you don't see you it know, happening. So like, to, like to see it, you know, you're like, oh, no way. I know, you know, I know. Like, you sort of like, even when I hung it up there, I was like, you know, how much, you know, I probably put like, you know, 20 pins on like our little board just for people to come take. And I was like, I had no idea what to expect. Like, yeah, maybe we'll get like one or something, you know, like I had like very low bar expectations. You come back from dinner and be like, oh, this one's new. Wait, that one's new. Oh, that, ooh, ooh, cool, 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 cool. You know, yes, like what yeah. is it? And we put up a little sign that said like we collect Pluto pins. So there's always the hope that like someone would see the sign and be like, oh, I'll leave a Pluto pin for Yes, them, uh, which happened, which had happened twice and both times it was extremely exciting and I loved it. Um, no, but- yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, it's it's like the weirdest version of like um like having something like passively. It, it's like putting out like a like a like a fishing net or something like that, and coming back to like discover like what did you get? Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, was there anything in there? <laughs> yeah, it was so fun. So when you found the Pluto ones, that was pretty great. Um, and then the other cool thing about it was like yeah, like our um you know, like every now and then it'd be like, Oh, I think we got one that was like a license plate. That's a doom buggy on it, which is what they call the carts at haunted mansion, which yes. is like Alice's favorite ride. And it was like, Oh my gosh. It was like, you know, sometimes they weren't like cool, like specifically to me. We'd be like, Alice, look at this. And it'd be like, oh, what? So cool. So yes. it was fun to like get them for other people too. Cause we had just like such like bulk trading ability, which was nice. Uh, but then like halfway through the trip, like we said, dad got the pin bug and he was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do goofy pins. And I was like, great choice. Cause there's just you know tons of goofies everywhere so then it gave you something like extra to look for it made like okay i can look at this board there's no pluto on it but there is a goofy so i may as well trade one and just give that to dad yes you know and then um when we got to the airport to leave for the trip um one of the bulk pins we got had been this like dalmatian and like you know our mom works at the spca and um Luke was like, oh, I just have to give this one to Nana. She's just going to love it just because it was a dog. Right. And so we got there and, you know, he ran straight over to her and was like, Nana, look. And like mom was like so touched. Like she just like she loved so much that how 
like he associated her with dogs and the pin and she was just like, okay, Dalmatians. I'm looking for anything Dalmatian anywhere. That's what I'm doing. Yes. And so every now and like the Dalmatian stuff is hard to find. Um, turns out there's not a ton of <laughs> merch being made for it, but anytime then you found like a Dalmatian pin, it was like, oh, score. Right. It was, I mean, it was so it, it, it made it fun to like search for other people too, like uh, beyond just the Pluto pins. But this is this is almost like, yeah, I feel like what what uh, is dawning on me a little bit is like you go in and you might like you might want to pick what your thing is going to be, but I almost think it needs to happen to you yeah. in some way. Like, yeah. cause I feel like you guys didn't really like pick Pluto. It was just sort of like, I mean, you did eventually, yeah. but like <clears throat> you didn't like go in initially being like Pluto, that's our guy. Like, you know, right, like, like, like here's a fun way to approach it. Right. But then like, you know, c- cause very similarly, um, mom went like, you know, Addie was, was finally tall enough. So she is like over 36 inches at this point. So yeah, she could go on like a bunch of rides. So like one of her first ever, like proper ride rides was going on Dumbo with mom. And so right. then like all of a sudden, like Dumbo meant, something told like mom because it was like her first ride with, with Addie, Addie right you know and like all but like again it's like I, like as kids it's not like we like watched a lot of Dumbo or anything like no, that or, I think or, we like actively disliked it yeah may, yeah. may have yeah exactly so it, but it's like but either way you know it's like oh my gosh it's so it was so cool like the like the little ways in which each like each pin ended up having like these like like memories right link, exactly back to them and stuff yeah. so so yeah. anyway as of now, the uh, we did eventually the lost and found forms did work. The airport had the bag. They have contacted us. They confirmed that it was the right one and they will be shipping it back to us. So we will get the pins back at some point. But at the moment, what is hilarious is that sure enough, by the end of the trip, my lanyard was loaded with Pluto pins like we I think I probably got like 15 new ones or something, That's amazing. which was so exciting for me personally. And just like the I, I think like the family like like Luke and Nick and Nate also know to look for the Pluto pins in particular. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. they know it's like a family thing. So that's exciting. I had, I ordered a brand new pin board to go on the wall because I ran out of space on the old one. Good problem to have. Yeah, no, good problem to have. Good problem to have. But like Beth had brought down like this, um, a, a Pluto themed fanny pack that she had uh, bought before the trip, which is also in the suitcase and is now missing. Oh gosh. But because it was like Pluto themed, she brought some of our pre existing Pluto pins with us uh, to just like adorn the bag with just sort of like, oh, this is cool. And uh, so since we lost the bag, uh, we actually are at the moment like net negative three <laughs> pins on the trip because some we brought some with us, which are now lost. So if and when the bag gets back to us, we'll be like up like 15 or something. That's but amazing. at the moment, I'm like, I cannot believe I went down there and walked around that boat so many times and got so many cool new pins and I'm walking away with less than I started with. Like, this is like, not this how to not be what's happening right now. Right, right, right. right. Yes, yes. Like, <sighs> like, certainly I expected my wallet to feel this way, but not my pin board. I uh, know, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> thing. it's like we didn't buy some too, you yeah, know? Right, 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 right. <laughs> like, it's all just gone. And it's like, you're right. It's like, it's funny that the pins are the thing that is like the thing that the thing that's missing the most. I Even know there's yeah. like an iPad. It's like, I think Beth had like a pretty nice dress in there and yeah, whatever. So uh, that's, that's what we're looking for. And the popcorn, which and now the, I'm like, I hope the popcorn's still good when it gets here. Like popcorn doesn't really go bad that fast. Or I'm anything. pretty sure we've had an entire conversation about the popcorn machine. That's quite literally that's sitting, you know, it's sitting next to you right now. Yeah. And I think at some point in time, you have just reached in and ate like three month old popcorn. It's true. Like, like true. No, no big, so. but the other, the other big like takeaway for me was that like, uh, we bought Allie like air tags for her, uh, like, like, keys once yeah. upon a time and i i have heard people who have like air tagged like everything or even like you know uh i think that there's like possible like kids clothing that like has like a little like like a like a pouch yeah for an air tag so like if you go to like a theme park or you're traveling or something right, you can like, like track your kids you or like, whatever you yeah. just track them yeah um but i was like oh my gosh after this trip i was like everybody's getting air tags for birthdays yeah, and christmas right. and holidays and all this stuff because well, that, we're, we're tracking everything from now on in pearl ways exactly well this was the other thing is that like we inside the bag we've mentioned is one of the iPads. Yes. And so we realized at some point like, oh, and maybe you've already pointed this out at home and you're like, why didn't you guys just do this? But there's like the find my iPhone function or whatever on it. And like Beth realized it and you could just and like she looks at me like, oh, we're going to do the find my iPhone. You could like like this like wave of relief just like crashed over both of us. Just like you're right. Oh my gosh, we have an out. The iPad was in there and I'm like immediately trying to like I've never used this before and like the iPads live at the office like did I turn on the functionality like 
like, why would I? It never goes anywhere, you know? Right, right. Like, and I'm like worried about that. And I'm like, whose account is it signed into? Is it like, is it like mine or Ben's or like a business account or something? Like, right. who's, and it's like, it's mine. So, I'm like, okay, this is going to work and you can go in and you can um, like even if you didn't activate it from you can use your phone to activate it on a different device wherever it is. Right. And I'm like, okay, boom, do it. And then it's like, but the problem is it's not like on at all. So it can't like send out the signal at all. So I'm like, all we need is for someone to go through the bag and like just push the on button and like, then it will like and register. then it will go and yeah. it, like it even occurs to me that like if you work in lost and found this is probably like a known thing like oh found an iPad click the button yeah like that that'll signal them or it's a way to signal them or something but we turned it on and like for 10 seconds we were like we're gonna know where it is you I know. know and then sure enough it didn't it didn't it did not register at all. I know and <laughs> it was so frustrating to you because the other iPad was left at the office and, yes. and editor Isabel was animating or like like illustrating. Yeah, on it. so we could see the other iPad yes. showing up on find my I know in, like in, in Roanoke. Roanoke. Yeah, it I'm was like, like no. oh, man. then the other one is showing up and it's like the device not found, which is also kind of funny because it means that you brought it on the trip with the hopes of using it for entertainment purposes, but it doesn't register the find my location if you haven't opened it for like seven days. Oh, that was uh, yeah, it had to be yeah. like seven days or something so I don't know if that means it would be active the whole time or something I don't know that it would be I think I think that probably where it had last been open yes. is most likely like which, where it was yeah but. which also hilariously would have just been in like at my house right but right. it was like it, this was like a full like if we what day did we leave on Friday so yeah. this was the next Friday and it would like I, I checked it Friday morning to see what movies were on there and then it was like, oh, here we go. Cool. They're on there. Put it back in. And then it never got turned on the rest of the trip. So this was Friday, like midday now. So even if, even if like just by turning it on, you activate the the beacon for like seven days, we missed out on it by like three hours. Yes, you know? it was like it was it was so like remarkably close to having been, you know, able to like like click into gear right. and everything. But <laughs> yeah, now that we're turning on, it's been seven days and three hours so right. it's gone so but this this is like one of those like like things in my mind where it's like you can because you know uh like my dogs for example are like microchipped you know and it's like one of those things where it's like it's a good safety measure in case they're ever lost so that we could be able to like identify them when right. somebody finds them and like prove that they're in fact our dogs and it's like but it's also one of those things where it's like you do it and it's like a safety precaution but you basically do it like you, like and you don't actually ever expect no, it's like insurance. It's like, yeah, you don't you have ever to have it, but you don't want to use it, right? You don't ever expect like reap the benefits of, <laughs> of having it. And, yeah. and it's like this was this was so close to one of those moments where like this piece of tech could have come into play. Like there's a part of me that almost like like wishes for the day. Like I've had stuff like stolen from my house. I think I've talked about it like, a yeah. handful of times, um, you know, and it's like there's there's always that part of me that like wishes I had like left a tracker on like my lawn mowers, right? Plural yeah. that have been stolen <laughs> um, and you know, because because then it would be like this, like this, like sweet moment where you could be like, I know where you are. Like, right. I know where my lawnmower is. <laughs> I'm coming would, to get it. I'm coming to get it. Like, it would be so it would be it, you could like savor that moment of like having done the precautionary step and then being able to use the precautionary step to successfully track down your lost item. And it's like now now it's like I'm like I'm so determined. Like, I want to lose something so I can find it. Right. Like, yeah. And, like, and have it. Like, you don't want something to be stolen. But at the same time, it'd be like if I if I if I tracked something thing and it was stolen and then I got it back like that'd be pretty cool it would, yeah I mean like right. how amazing would it be like I see I see I, I know see. where they are right well I mean that sounds like a little intense but 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 still I sure, mean because then you could like just I mean you could just genuinely just call the police and be like yeah my lawnmower was stolen I have a GPS tracker for it and I know exactly where it is yes yeah so <laughs> please go like, retrieve it for me yes yeah 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 <laughs> So uh, anyway, but we're yeah. So now now it's like now I want to uh, I want to tag all of my stuff. And then that way, like when we travel in perpetuity, it will just always be available to be rediscovered. Exactly. Again. Lest yeah. you uh, lose it, which this like this is the bag we actually lost. But it is not the first time on the trip when we almost lost the bag because when we were leaving Roanoke, we had a connecting flight in Charlotte. Yes. And we got it was like really cold that morning. So before they left, they wanted to like spray the plane down with some like anti icing liquid or something. Right. Which, great. Thank you for doing that. But like rather than the plane having a mechanical problem, like the the hose truck had a problem yes. or something. So mm -hmm. we're sitting on the tarmac for like 40 minutes waiting for them to finally decide to bring over the second hose truck or whatever and yeah. blast the wings. And uh, you know, obviously we, we made it safe. But because we sat there, our connection was just like we are going to have to get off the plane 
and run. Like, y- yes. run, like, run. Like, we had to be those people. Yeah, like, yeah. sprinting through the airport. And we're like, we're all like working. And it's like, one, we were in a small plane. So it's like, you get off, and that doesn't mean you can just immediately take off because all the luggage, they don't have overhead space. So they just put the luggage underneath. So when you get off, you have to wait for them to go get the stuff from underneath. And they slowly bring it out one at a time. And you're hoping to win the bag lottery. And, you know, so like, I know I'm going to wait for the bag lottery. And Beth's like, okay, the kids are going to be a lot slower moving through the airport because we got that's the other thing. Like running is one thing running with three kids, whole different story. Yes. So yeah. that's like we're, like we all have we all have like a plan. It's like, okay, you people are waiting for the bags. You people are going to focus on getting the kids all the way across the airport. As soon as we go, you just take off and we'll catch up because you're going to move slower and we're going to move faster. Right. Kind of thing. So like that we're, we're waiting. We get there and like the the people in front of us go and we're just like go and sh- like we Beth manages to get to the other gate and she's got all the kids and I am like running through the airport. I'm pushing both of our rolly bags right and I finally catch up and it's like like her part of the plan. She executed perfectly. She turns around. And she's like, where's Ben and Alice? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm the uh, last I saw Alice. She said run, you know, <laughs> <laughs> run, and she's like, where are my parents? And I'm like, they were still waiting for their bag there. You know to her. She's like, why didn't you guys coordinate? And I'm like, look, we had the back group had a plan. Okay, you don't worry about it. no, you know, <laughs> right, right, right. No, I know we're good. Yeah, but but like this, this was like one of those moments where like you're you're like sprinting around the corner and like it was so funny too because like as ever, you know, like when you're stuck on a plane for like an extended period of time, especially given some of like the weather related circumstances and everything, it's like you you get to your destination and it's like the first thing you want to do when you get off the plane is just like go run to the restroom really yeah. quick and it's sort of like you know most of the time that's not that big of a deal you just have enough time yeah oh yeah when you're connecting flights but this was like literally one of those where i was like i was like racing through the hallways and i'm like going past the bathroom i'm like i bet we have enough time for me to like run in and i'm like ah i don't know and like as i'm thinking this you call me and you're like hey i'm at the gate like they're about to close the door yeah and i'm like, I'm like what never you know? mind so i'm like sprinting around the corner and like the like the lady's like holding you know like the edge of the door or whatever yeah. and then like you go through but then there's the situation where it was like like your your uh in-laws yeah my in- in laws are still not there and we're like oh my gosh like this is not going to be a missing bag situation this is going mm-hmm. to be like we have taken off on a flight and left two members I of know, our party that behind. was like worst case scenario it was like wait for everyone to get here before you get on but then they're like you know you guys got to get on and people like our parents have like already gotten on it was like oh god now we're in a real situation here yes yes and like i'm like we're like walking down the jetway and like i'm looking back i'm like please don't close the door i'm like just waiting for like pam and martin to come around the corner and like i mean it was like heroic like they turned the corner and it was like oh, that's them that's them that's them hold the door hold the door and they're like okay 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 no big deal no big deal and then we get in there and beth's like where's the where's the duffel bag you're supposed to grab the duffel bag and i'm like and i'm like replaying the conversation when we were sitting on the plane earlier and i was like yeah i was supposed to grab a duffel bag and i 1000 <laughs> percent did not i i like i a million percent don't have it. I'm like, you know, I don't even know, like look around and be like, wait, did I get it? No, it was like, no, it's like, I definitely <laughs> like, did not I, get the other I duffel bag. I completely yeah. forgot it. And I'm like, oh no, now our duffel bags on the other plane. And like, normally I wouldn't have even thought I'd be like, you know what? Let me run back to the other gate. And it's like, there's no chance. No you way. Know, there's yeah. no way. It's not yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah. Hold on. We know exactly where it is. You've got two hours to wait. We'll get it back to you. And it was like, right. nope. And it's like, that's got all the kids jackets. That's got all these useful things we're going to need. And we're just like freaking out like um, as you know preview of the next Friday where yeah. we actually lose the bag, but then uh, Pam and Martin like walk around the corner and like we got your duffel and it was like <gasps> I know oh my God. Was, it, it was, was like it was like everything just I know, like clicked I back together. Yeah. It. it was like I can't believe that that was like a travel miracle. It was like a travel miracle only for us to then lose a bag at a different point. Oh yeah, but, and, and this is still not even mm. counting the fact that on the on this very next flight, our dad's bag was lost. Wait, uh, was it? Oh, you're yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, on the on yes. our way to Disney. Yeah, by, just just by like because it was his checked bag. It was his checked bag. It was his checked bag and yeah. it got like on on some other this never I don't understand how checked luggage works and how it doesn't it's not just on the plane with you or like sometimes it goes on other planes to get to the destination. I don't know how it works, but yeah, he, he, <laughs> the airport lost his bag rather than him losing it. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. So then he had to he had to then Ugh. recover it as well. So what a trip it was. It was a trip full of calamities and uh, a travel party of 12 people, yep. including four kids, all mm-hmm. of whom still probably Probably need a fair bit of uh, extra care and attention extra care, in yeah, terms they, of they, navigating. They, right, and, like they can walk um, around pretty good, but they do want to be held. Yes. You know? So it was, it was like all in all, on the whole, 
I thought it was just a really, really, really fun trip. And it was like the thing that made me the most happy about that is that like during the trip, I had like some of my, my like most stressful like moments as like a parent. Yeah. But then like at the same time, it was so interesting to me because I've I, like in like in the past year, you know, like I've had plenty of vacations like where certain things like came up or were like there were challenges associated or the weather was really bad or there were mosquitoes or, you know, too much rain or not enough or, or whatever the case may be. You know, it's like you've, you've encountered all these various issues. And this is what I mean. It's like when you're on the trip, it's like you have no idea when all is said and done, like what will like rise to the top as like the memorable moments of the trip. Right. And it was amazing to me, at least in particular, that like I got home, I got through all of the chaos, like all the madness, like all of, like the the flights, exchanges, the crying, the 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 excitement, the sugar rushes, like right. whatever. <clears throat> and it was like all the negative <clears throat> stuff like fell to the bottom and all of the good stuff rose to the top. Yeah. And I was like, man, like I, like when I was in it, I couldn't have told you that that's how I would like walk out the other side. Right. But like, sometimes that's what you need. It's like, there's, it's like, you've got a medley of experiences happening. There's, there's tens and twos and you know, like, like good times, bad times, highs, lows, ups, downs, whatever. Right. And it's like, when you get out the other side, it's like, you'll, you'll eventually when you reflect, you get to enjoy or, or despair in, in, yeah. in your recollection. Exactly. And like, and like what stood out to you. So anyway, on the whole, I thought that it was, I thought it was an amazing and fun trip and I, and I'm, I'm just, I'm glad we did it. Yeah. I'm glad we did it too. I, I mean, I would, I would definitely go on another cruise. I would maybe want my boys to be just a smidge older. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I maybe could, so. I, would, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine also at the same rate, like I was also imagining like what it would be like if they were all like, you know, d- like 13 or something and you could just, you know, wake up in the morning and be like, all right guys, we have dinner at five 45 at Arendelle. See you there. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, just yeah. like go have, fun. you know, you know, your way around the boat, go do whatever you want, you know, right. but see you did it this time so that that time. Yeah. Like, you know, it's exactly. like, it's like, it's like how they say, like when you get home and you almost need like a vacation from your vacation. Because yeah. Sometimes vacations are so like, like fast paced yeah. that it's like, it's not relaxing. And then you get home and you're like, man, I have to go to work in a day. Yeah. And, and, and you're like, I don't know if I'm ready. Like I'm, I'm exhausted from everything I just did. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I almost feel like this would be like my, my takeaway. I felt very similar the first time Alice and I went to Disney as adults, I think back in 2017 with and with the camper, yeah. you know, where it was like, it was jam packed with calamity. Like Alice had way more experience going to the parks than I did. So I was just like drinking from the fire hose. I didn't know about like the the lightning lanes and like how to do all of the fast passes right. and didn't have any know, pins did, yeah no pins whatsoever oh, yeah so you know like i didn't know how to like dress for the trip i locked my keys in the camper at one point in time i had to have like a locksmith come and like crack me open and all this type of stuff and it's like it was like all of these things happened and i almost felt like by the time the next trip came around and it was like okay now we're staying like in one of the resorts that's going to have like bus transport to everything. Yeah. Now I know how fast passes work. Now I know which places I get to like look forward to going to. It was like all of this stuff was sort of like it synced into place. And I was like, I almost feel like you need to go on a cruise so you can just get like the absolute like, like crash course on how all this stuff works. Yeah. So that when you go on the next one, right. it's like, okay, now I got it. Like right now I know we what to expect. It. Now I know where to go. We're now in the rhythm. We, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's like, I mean, there were, ju- there were just little like nuanced things that it's like, you can see, yourself getting better at even as the week went on like you could fill this little card to hang out on your door that would they would like you know they would like bring you like a continental breakfast to your room yes at the morning and like that was so convenient but like uh, all of it is like a lot of bread stuff uh-huh. mostly yeah, yeah whereas um and like you know someone's gonna come knock on the door and if the kids are still asleep like maybe that's gonna wake them up or yeah. you know whatever but like by the last day we realized that like at seven o'clock the buffet floor is open and at seven o'clock no I mean nobody is awake right like yeah. everyone's asleep so you can just walk up there load your plate up with all the breakfast you want and walk right back down to the room with it and it was like not only was it like faster but it was like a huge selection and it was like you can just get whatever you wanted. Yeah, like much, much more nutritionally yeah, much balanced. more nutritionally balanced food. Yeah. So it was like, oh man, I wish we'd just been doing that the whole time. Like I was awake at seven anyway. You right. Know? Yes. If only if only I'd realized it's like now if I go back, it's like, oh, I'm on it. 
I know about breakfast. Yes. So yeah, yeah it's like my, my like mental analogy for it is almost <laughs> like, like doing, doing trips like this. It's like the first time you go, you've got like a blank page and it's like, like if you imagine like a coloring book, it's like you go with a blank page. The first trip is like giving like the black markered outlines yeah. of like what you're supposed to fill in. And then the next one is using colors. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And, and <clears throat> so I think like if I were to go again, it would be like, okay, I know the outline. I know the shape of it. I know what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Now I can optimize. Now we can do but it. But there was, was, I mean, I, that would be my, that would be like my piece of advice. It's like you, because and I, I think maybe there's like a little bit of this as well that can be like disparaging to you while you're on a trip where, cause you do all the research, you can read all the blogs, you watch all the videos, like all, all the things that you did. It's like, I'm going to be so prepared for this. And then you get there and it's like, there's so much stuff. There's so much like stuff. That you have to like learn about how it all works uh, to kind of get the, the framework together. But I think that having like the right mental, uh, like, like, um, uh, expectation in place yeah. can go such a long it way. really towards, can. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I can't wait to go back to Disney. It's always so much fun. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So if you guys have any fun uh, cruise related stories, be sure to email them over to popcornculturepod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. We love to get all of your amazing feedback and I do read every single one of the emails that comes through. So thank you guys so much if you've written in in the past. Also, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so by going over to patreon.com slash popcornculture. We've got lots of cool perks there, including after the final pop, Mm-hmm. Just extra me and Jay talking about something else we didn't get to in the main episode. Yeah, probably um, more cruise stuff, if I'm being honest. Yeah, there's a good possibility. We haven't we have to stop there. So again, patreon.com slash popcorn culture. But otherwise, until next time. Pop pop. <laughs>